If you'd like to learn about piecewise functions, then click here. If you already know about them, then try out this question. OK, let's get started. Here's an example of a piecewise function, which we're calling f of x. This function is a combination of two other functions, x squared and minus x. Don't worry about all this notation just yet. Let's first look at the x squared over here. Which of these is the correct graph of x squared? If you'd like to review how to graph functions instead, then click down here. OK, great. Now let's look at the other function up here, which was minus x. Which of these remaining graphs shows the function y equals minus x? Nicely done. So here are the two functions that were written up here. Let's plot them on the same set of axes. So here's y equals x squared, and here's y equals minus x. Now let's take a closer look at this notation up here. This says we're making, or defining, a new function, f of x, which equals x squared for all values of x less than or equal to minus 1, and it equals minus x for all values of x greater than minus 1. So on this graph down here, can you identify at which x coordinate f of x switches from being x squared to being minus x? Exactly, f of x switches when x equals minus 1. Let's draw the function f of x in purple. When x is less than or equal to minus 1, f of x equals x squared. But at x equals minus 1, this function switches and equals minus x for values of x greater than minus 1. So this is a graph of the function f of x. Because f of x is defined as two different pieces, an x squared piece over here, and a minus x piece over here, this is called a piecewise function. Notice that this piecewise function is continuous. Although it's made up of two different pieces, you can still draw the function without picking up your pen. That's because the two pieces, x squared and minus x, have the same value at x equals minus 1. Both functions have an output of 1 over here. But not all piecewise functions are continuous like this one. Let's look at another example of a piecewise function. Suppose f of x equals 1 for all x less than 0, and it equals 2x for all x greater than or equal to 0. Here's the function y equals 1, and here's the function y equals 2x. Which pieces of these two lines are also part of the function f of x? Well done. Here are the pieces you picked out. Notice there's a discontinuity, or a break, in the function when x equals 0. According to the definition of this piecewise function up here, what is f of 0? If you're not sure, then click over here. Right, because x equals 0 is in this lower piece, f of 0 equals 2 times 0, which is still 0. The way to show that f of 0 equals 0, and not some other number, is to put a filled-in circle at this point down here. So f of x equals 2x, when x equals 0, and at all x coordinates greater than 0. And for the line y equals 1, we can put a hollow circle when x equals 0. This is a graphical way to show that f of x equals 1 when x is less than 0, but not when x equals 0. So here's the graph of this function, f of x. Let's look at a slightly more complicated piecewise function, which we'll call g of x. In this example, g of x has three pieces. g of x equals minus 1 for all x less than or equal to minus 2. g of x equals x squared plus 1 when x is greater than minus 1, but less than or equal to 1. And g of x equals 3 for all x greater than 1. So which of these graphs down here is the correct graph of g of x? If you're not sure, then just click down here. Nicely done. This first graph here correctly plots all three pieces of g of x. Also, notice that g of x is not defined when x is between minus 2 and minus 1, so there are no outputs for these x coordinates. In other words, these inputs are not part of this function's domain. Let's look at one final piecewise function. Let's define the function f of x as equaling minus x for all x less than 0, and is equaling x for all x greater than or equal to 0. Which of these is the correct graph for this function f of x?
Well done! Here's the correct graph for this function. You might have seen this piecewise function before. It's called the absolute value function, and it's typically written with vertical bars on either side of the input. Try evaluating the absolute value function for a few different inputs, minus 3, 0, and 5. Exactly. The absolute value function is a piecewise function that doesn't change zero or positive numbers, but gets rid of the minus sign in front of negative numbers, making them positive. So the absolute value function tells you the magnitude of a number, meaning how big it is, without worrying about whether the number is positive or negative. Here we'll introduce compositions. If you're ready to learn about them, click here. If you already know how to compose functions, try simplifying this composition over here. OK, we'll start from the basics. Suppose you take an input x and you put it into a function f. How can you write the output of this function in terms of f and x? If you'd like to review what functions are instead, then click down here. Right, if you put the variable x into the function f, then you can write the output as f of x. Now let's suppose you take this output, f of x, and you put it into another function, g. How can you write the output of g in terms of g, f, and x? Nicely done. Just like putting x into f gives you f of x, putting f of x into g gives you g of f of x. Let's see what g of f of x is for an example. Suppose f of x equals 2x minus 1, and g of x equals x squared. Let's make a table of inputs and outputs for these functions. We'll use the inputs 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. First, for these inputs, what's f of x? Nicely done. Next, try plugging these values for f of x into the function g to see what g of f of x equals for these different values of x. So far we've been plugging different numbers into the functions f and g. Let's look at what happens to the variable x. When you plug x into this function f, you get 2x minus 1. Now the function g squares everything you put into it. When you put x into g, you get x squared. When you put 5 into g, you get 5 squared, or 25. When you put 9 into g, you get 9 squared, or 81. What do you get when you put 2x minus 1 into g? Your answer should be in terms of x. Exactly. g of f of x equals 2x minus 1 squared. If you expand this polynomial, you can also write the result as 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. So if f of x equals 2x minus 1 and g of x equals x squared, then g of f of x equals 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. Now what happens if we apply the functions in the opposite order? In other words, in terms of x, what's f of g of x? If you get stuck on this question, no problem. Just click over here. OK, let's take a careful look at this expression. We said the function g of x equals x squared, so we can plug in x squared for the g of x over here. This means x squared is the input for our function f. Now f of x equals 2x minus 1. This means the function f multiplies its inputs by 2 and then subtracts 1. So f of x equals 2x minus 1, but we could put anything into this function f of a equals 2a minus 1, and f of k equals 2k minus 1. So what's f of x squared? Right, f of x squared equals 2x squared minus 1. So that means f of g of x equals 2x squared minus 1. Notice that g of f of x and f of g of x are not the same for this example. The order in which you apply functions matters g of f of x usually is not equal to f of g of x. Now another way to write g of f of x is like this, with a circle between the g and the f. You can read this aloud as g composed with f 
of x, where g composed with f is a new function. When we applied these functions earlier, we took x, put it into f to get f of x, and then put f of x into g to get g of f of x. But we can also think of this as one big function. You put in an x, and you get out some function of x. This function that turns x into g of f of x is g composed with f. And you can write the output of this composition of functions as g of f of x, or equivalently like this. Similarly, another way to write f of g of x is like this, f composed with g of x. OK, last question. In terms of x, evaluate this expression, f composed with f of x.